to another edition of The Comic Anthologist, and if you are tuning in for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Now today, we are going to talk about the X-Men, but we're going to talk about the X-Men in a particular story that has been in the media over the last few years. I wouldn't even say few years. Multiple, multiple years. Okay. Several decades. Any case, because it started back in 1980, and we're talking about the storyline called Days of Future Past. Now, the X-Men made their debut back in 1963, around the time when Jack Kirby and Stan Lee were having their moment in terms of creating all the characters that you know of, and kind of like the creative renaissance. Exactly. Yeah. With including Spider-Man, the Hulk, and things of that nature, Doctor right. Strange. So that was around that time when the X-Men were created because these individuals were born with their powers. Yes, exactly. But and this was a direct result of, at the time, with the Cold War going on, and that the nuclear testing was going on, Basically, they crafted it where the stories had the radioactive fallout from those bombs being detonated, test bombs, is simply put, affected the humans having kids at that time. Right, and one of the, one of the characters, uh, his dad was a, a nuclear physician, you yeah. know, something like that. That was Hank McCoy's dad. Yeah, the Beast, right. Yes, Hank McCoy's dad was the Beast. That's a direct result of that. But getting back to the point is that the X-Men were created as a new class of humans that were basically like known as homo superior yes homo superior that were how shall i say best which is going on in current times today in terms of being hated um, for being different hated for the abilities hated for just being that upper echelon or that next level of human being basically it's racism against superpowered beings and it's no different that's the reason why they were created by right. uh, stanley and jack kirby is because they, they were, were considered the new class of humans that were uh, called mutants, and basically it was just a metaphor for people, 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 people of, of color, race, of people of color, different races or ethnicities or whatnot. Because it was created at the time during the time of the uh, Civil War, not the Civil War, the Civil Rights Movement. I am so sorry, I'm getting my facts uh, screwed up right now. Yeah, it's no, it's not a problem, dude. But um, but the yeah. whole the whole thing is the particular story of Days of Future Past. Reason why it is so relevant and so important in X Men lore, and and it was created, it was written by. The dream team back in the day of Chris Claremont and John, and John Byrne. Byrne. Yes. And so when they wrote that, the pivotal issues were issues Uncanny X Men 141 and 142. No. Now, in those issues, it was basically 35 years into the future where humans had been put in concentration camps or hunted. Or better yet, just slaughtered or off. You're basically mutants, were Mutants, no, mutants and superpowered humans alike were being hunted. And humans. Yes, yeah. and humans who dared to help them were all either put in internment camps, slaughtered, mm -hmm. or the ones, the uh, humans that were able to have mutant that children. Have that gene to carry mutant children. Yeah, they were basically either killed off or they were put into the same concentration camps and were rendered sterile. And, or rendered second class citizens amongst the elite. Right. And basically, you had the worst of humanity running everything in that timeline. And the, the problem was, uh, or the main villains that the X-Men and basically the people at large had to deal with was dealing with these robotic entities called Sentinels. Now Sentinels were basically programmed by Bolivar Trask to hunt down and slaughter mutants. And the whole thing is that the, with the Sentinels, they could adapt to any mutant's power, so whoever they're uh, whichever mutant that they're fighting, they could find a way to adapt and counter it, their fight, thereby effectively um, knocking out their mutant power and then effectively killing them or whatnot. Basically neutralizing them. And this is a cover of Days of Future Past, or one of the covers that was put right. Into it's the a, book it's, yes, a reprint, a reprint of basically a re. re imagining of issue 142 of Uncanny X-Men, exactly. where you see a sentinel, basically, one has Storm skewered, and the other one has Wolverine basically being, getting being flash fried, yes. yes. And so, the thing was, it was a two-issue storyline, but, um, and mind you, I would say, that's what got me reading X-Men as a uh, teenager, because right. one of my boys, uh, back in high school, he snuck in some comic books in class. Oh yeah. And so, so instead of paying attention to the teacher, he was like, dude, why don't you check this out and give them back to me at the end of class. <laughs> and so I started reading them and instantly after reading 141 and 142, you were hooked. I was hooked. Yes. I was it. I was just like, okay, I'm a, I'm a fan for life. Well, see, you were the main one that just hit me to it because you basically had let me see those books or 
Yeah, because I got them years later for myself. Yeah, you got them years And I didn't know what you were talking about because you were so hell-bent on getting those yeah. books. Then when you finally got them, I read them, I was like, oh, <laughs> I get it. I really, really, really do get it. Yeah, exactly. And so the thing was about that particular storyline is basically the people in power, the government that was in power, they let their hatred run so rampant that they turned on the Sentinels knowing and not knowing that the Sentinels then eventually turned up, turned on them, on the people in powers, because basically mm -hmm. they were given an open-ended parameter in the mutant threat. Right. And so what they did was, since that was brought for parameters, they took over the government, they slaughtered any human beings, just like we said, or rendered their sterile, and, and they killed off the Avengers, they killed off the X-Men, they killed off Spider-Man, Fantastic Rider, Four, everybody. They and were killing anybody off. that was super-powered in the uh, Marvel Universe at that time. They slaughtered all of them, just right. so that way they can keep everyone in check, because right. they figured, well, if mutants are humans, and humans therefore need to be kept in check, so that right. way no more of those superpowered beings can be born right. from uh, humans alike or whatnot. Right. And like I said, and it all started with one pivotal event, which was the assassination, assassination of, of, Senator, of Senator Robert, Robert Kelly. Kelly. Right. Now, with Senator Robert Kelly's death, that's what prompted them to start the Sentinel program. And that's where Bolivar Trask used those Sentinels as a re direct result, having the government fund his program to go in and slaughter right. as many mutants right. as they could possibly. And it just turned into a bloodbath. And then by 2015, well, let's just say there were only a few X-Men left alive. Right. And not to mention, too, most of the, the population of the uh, U.S. were basically subjected under the rule of the Sentinels. Not only that, too, the Sentinels were about to move on to so say conquered North America. They were about to move on to the other parts of the world and subjugate them as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where the X-Men had to try to make that last stand against the Omega-class Sentinels at that time. And one thing I liked about the second issue, 142, is that the action was taking place in the present at the time oh, of, yes. of 1980. And then the, the future of 20, 2015. 2015. They were concurrently going on at the same time. And there was one pivotal person that was basically the, the linchpin for both timelines mm -hmm. to come together. And her name was uh, Catherine Pride or uh, Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride. And so basically what they did was uh, one of the telepaths, Rachel Summers, which is an alternate timeline, timeline of version Phoenix. of uh, Phoenix, but, which is we'll get Scott and Jean's daughter. But we'll get into that later. But um, in Kitty Pride's uh, case, her the future version of her, her, meant her mind was sent back to her younger... Uh, body to warn the X-Men about there would be a particular assassination of Robert Kelly. Right. To and so that timeline from happening. Place. Yes. And so basically when they sent her back in time, mentally, they sent her back in time to prevent the assassination. And the assassination was prevented, but it didn't guarantee that that timeline was still going right, to come, still to come to pass. Because even in that future timeline, right before Catherine had uh, succeeded in her mission, Wolverine was vaporized. Well, his, his well, the flesh was vaporized. Off. His skeleton was still around because it's adamantium covered. And then, of course, we just talked about Aurora being storm being skewered. And, and then, then Colossus. Uh, they, they didn't. Even, it was so bad that they didn't even show his death. It wasn't even shown on the page. They just he died real quick because the Sentinels overwhelmed him and took him apart or whatever. Whatever. Because I guess we get a hint of it because. Uh, they had made two iterations of it, I would say, or multiple iterations of it, but... The two main ones would have to be the animated series from, from the, the 90s. 1990s. And that was the 11th and 12th episodes of uh, the X-Men series at that time. Animated right. series, right. Which was, they were both called Days of Future Past, Part 1 and Part 2. And the linchpin in that series... Was the mutant known as Bishop. Exactly, because he was the time-traveling mutant. And but, then there was the 2014 movie. Yeah, the movie, that movie was like one of the best X-Men movies I've ever watched. Yes, period. Fox did their homework and finally got one of them right. But, <laughs> exactly. now that Fox is under Disney, that's a whole other story altogether. Anyway, uh, I would have to say that version of Days of Future Past was a little, how shall I say best? They had to make some alterations. Yeah, because and they, and Wolverine was popular at the time, and so yes. they used uh, Kitty Pride. The, the twist of it was they used Kitty Pride to basically put Wolverine's mind in from the from the future future Wolverine into the past Wolverine right from the past of 1973 right so that was a twist and the battles that were going on it was still that same linchpin there was a battle going on in between the future and then there was the battle going on in the past but then in the past part of the movie 
was taking place in the 1970s. So if yeah, you ever that was in the 1973 when Richard Nixon was still in yeah, the during, power. Yeah, during the Vietnam War. And the one that took place in the future was the timeline of 2023, but most of those X-Men were slaughtered off just to buy time for Wolverine to do what he needed to do right. in the past, so that way that timeline would never come to existence. Right. And the Sentinel program was completely wiped out. Because the Sentinels, basically, the Sentinels were unbeatable, because they, just like we, I said, mentioned earlier, Sentinel, robotic Sentinels were so adaptive to their powers that anything that the X-Men threw at them, they could counter it and they could turn around and slaughter them real quick and move on to the next X-Men. Exactly. And it's, that's the thing they did it with any mutant or any superpowered person. Right. And eventually, we won't get into that now, but they did come up with the ultimate sentinel named Nimrod. Now, Nimrod was AI sentinel program that was so adaptable that no mutant no X-Men has able to, been able to beat him. But like I said, that's another story for another time. But Nimrod has been a thorn in the X-Men side time and time again because he was the next evolutionary step from Omega-class Sentinels to the Ultimate Sentinel. And oh, and one other thing, one last thing I want to say about Nimrod. Because exactly. Nimrod came from that same timeline of uh, Days of Future Past. Right. Nimrod went through a portal which made him The Siege human. Perilous. The Siege Perilous, which made him human. Mm -hmm. Well, have human have have a human body, and basically turned out to be the known the X Men villain known as Bastion. Bastion. Yes. And so, me, reason why I keep saying that Days of Future Past writers keep going back to that particular storyline because they've had X Men Second Coming, they've had um, X Men Zero Tolerance. Yes. They've had X Men uh, Days of Future Present. Yep. I mean, there and were so we, many stories yes. derived from just those two key pivotal issues. 141 of 142 and they're still popular in today's culture now as it is now and it's been almost uh, I want to say 40 years almost 40 years because yeah. next year will be 2020 so it'll be 40 years since the release of that particular book which was November of 1980 right but of course I'm a data and I thought you weren't gonna talk about the dates man. Yeah. well come on I just had to throw that out there because mm -hmm. you know how comic books are published at a certain time and you know but in any case that's what I thought yeah, yeah we'll get back yeah. to it yeah <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> Well, All this right. is another edition of the Comic Anthologist. Thank you for tuning in. And once again, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. And if you right. want to reach us or try, not so much try, but want to interact with us and talk about some of the subjects, right. you could hit us up at thecomicanthologist at gmail.com. This is us signing out. Until the next time. Peace. Peace.